What's up guys, we're back with another TMNT Wave 3 figure from Super 7, taking a look at probably the one that I think most folks are the most curious about, because Super 7 did go back to make some revisions, add some stuff, and just change this figure to try and make her as as ultimate as possible, I suppose. So today we're taking a look, well, I said her, so we're obviously taking a look at April O'Neil, our gutsy news gal. Uh, as usual, same stuff we always expect to see with the Ultimates line. You've got the slip cover for her, so the ooze kind of color for the good guys or good gals, and you've got an April manhole cover, and then the back has got the Turtles logo kind of varnish on there. Of course, pop that slip cover off, and you've got her there in the big window, so you've got her there with all of her accessories. Uh, you've got the sort of green brick background with all the graffiti all over it, giving that sort of cityscape kind of look and feel. And then the back of the box, of course, like every other figure in the line so far, has got the Turtles logo, tons more graffiti, and then you've, of course, got a bio for her as well. So let's do it. Let's pull her out and take a look. And here we go, out of the package, our Ultimates April O'Neil figure. This has got to be the one that a lot of folks truly want to see, want to have in their hands. And I gotta say, right off the bat, I have a lot more appreciation for this figure now that I have it in hand than when I saw the original prototypes and when I saw early, early pictures of the first few sets that people had got in hands. I don't think they looked very good, but having her in hand, I do like this figure a bit more. I'm not gonna say it's not without its issues because there are definitely things that, that I don't like about April, but she looks better than the prototype and I do think she looks a lot better in hand. And to top it off, she definitely looks like what this line is supposed to be. She looks like the vintage figure in a number of ways. Uh, it doesn't fix some of the problems that it has, but I think it's very much in line with, with what uh, the figure should look like in many respects. So let's get started, see what she can do, see how she moves around. We've got our head that is kind of locked down, unfortunately. Uh, she can't look up. She can look down slightly. That's kind of neutral, and then she can kind of look down. Not much, though. Slight tilt at the, at the head. Slight. And then you've got rotation. Arms go out at the shoulders. They rotate. We've got our uh, telltale single-jointed elbow with the rotation. And then you've got hinges and rotation at the wrist. They're lateral hinges here. We've got a waist twist, and that is it for uh, any kind of ab articulation. I wish that the horsemen could kind of inject their waist articulation that they use in legions into this line. I feel like it would help a lot uh, with figures well, like April, but especially figures like Bebop, Rocksteady, Shredder, stuff like that, just to give them some, some crunch at the waist. Uh, we've got legs that kick all the way out. You can get her to do the the news channel splits, I suppose. Kick forward, kick all the way back. And then you've got a slight thigh twist here. So her legs are a little bit different in some ways uh, than the turtles because the turtles legs kind of stop right about here. And then you've got the joint that's almost well, sort of semi-exposed. Hers is entirely encapsulated by the leg to make it as seamless as possible since she's got pants on. Uh, so it's basically, it's kind of like a McFarlane leg almost, but it does move a little bit more than that. But it does, the, the hips get in the way. So when you try to twist, it goes only so far back and then it stops. If you were to kick the leg all the way out, it's going to rotate all the way around just because of how it's constructed. You've got your single jointed knee with rotation there as well. And then we've got rocker, I mean really good rocker. And then you've got really good hinges down at those ankles as well. So she is for the most part, uh, pretty similar to the other figures in the line. The, the hips are a little bit different just because of what's going on there, but she's very similar in design to pretty much all the non-turtle figures. Well, not mutagen man, but pretty much all the non-turtles. Aesthetically, I think for the most part, this figure does look really solid. There are a couple of key takeaways that do, you know, kind of knock her down a bit. And I'm going to talk about the big one right away. It's the plastic finish on this figure. She is, she is incredibly shiny by comparison to every other figure that we've gotten in this line. And I have to say that my main assumption for that is the colors here. This yellow is so, so bright and vibrant that I think it just shines like a beacon on its own anyway. And that really doesn't bother me too much because when you get the vintage figure next to her, it's basically the same color. It's really, really close color match. So I'm actually happy about that. The big thing is her skin tone. She is, she is so, so, so pale. Like there's almost a pink nature to her skin tone. And there is a little bit of shading on her too. Like there's a little bit on her, like her throat. And there's a little bit on her face as well. Uh, it's not an unpainted face. There is, there is paint on it. Um, but it's, it's this plastic color, I believe, that might lead to some issues. And I got, and I will say that 
in typical fashion when it comes to any kind of shiny plastic stuff, being under intense, quote unquote, studio lights do not help the figure. Uh, it's just the way it is when I'm doing a video. So we've got, you know, really bright white lights just blasting her right now. She looks a lot better just in normal lighting. So, you know, you're, you might have no issues with her in your display, but I do think there is, uh, there is some just oddness about the color choice here. I think the color looks good, but it, it seems to translate weirdly uh, into the finished product for me. There is almost, and, it, and it's the wrong word, it can't be the right word, there is almost like a translucency to the way she looks. I've even sh shown a flashlight on her just to see how uh, opaque or not this plastic is, and it really doesn't change anything. Uh, she seems to be very much opaque, but at the same time, there's something about her that seems to be a little bit translucent, which is just, uh, which is really weird, and it's hard to really put into words. The rest of the figure, I do think, looks good. Sculpt is good. Sizing is good. She is appropriately sized, and I don't, I don't want to really inject too many other lines into this, but she is not, she is not misproportioned like. The NECA figure is. Uh, by comparison, she definitely seems to fit the bill when it comes to sizing. Uh, there is a little bit of paint on her, like her boots are painted because they're it's all one piece down here. Uh, the belt is painted and you do have the blue line. So this is of course a blue line variant uh, April and I, I know variant's not the right word for this particular release, uh, but of course the vintage figure had a running change where this blue line was added after the fact. The original, original April is just yellow. Uh, I do think there might be an error here though because my blue line in April has uh, blue lines that go all the way up to here and covers the most of the pocket. It just doesn't cover the flap. So we'll see that more here in a minute. And then of course, you know, in typical fashion, because she's uh, you know, a news reporter, why not put the Turtles logo on your back just to show where your allegiance is lie? But that's uh, pretty clean and crisp and straight as well. And I do like that callback because of course, that's what's on the vintage figure, so why not put it on here too? Uh, she does have some shading on her jumpsuit. There's a little hit of orange like on the wrinkles. It's basically where there are wrinkles. There's little hits of orange just to kind of bring it out a bit. So like around her midsection, on the shoulders, and then on the back as well. So I do think that for the most part, she does look pretty good. I think a lot of it comes down to the finish of this plastic. Even the head sculpt, I think the head sculpt does look really good, but I do think there is something lost here a bit because of the plastic. This, this one kind of reminds me in particular of the Ultimates Filmation He-Man. If you could remember back that far when Super 7 re-released a, a handful of, of Mo2 Classics figures, that He-Man had a weird issue where like you could almost not see his nose in some respects, and he looks really gaunt as a, as a result. That is not exactly the same issue here, but I do think that something about her is kind of lost a little bit. It sort of fades away at the nose. I do think the eyes look a little bit far apart as well. Uh, the head sculpt, though, Again, I think the details are there. Uh, maybe a little bit more paint could bring it out. I'm curious to see if anybody goes that route uh, on their on their figure, you know, customizers out there. And then the hair sculpt looks really good as well. Lots of paint on that, a uh, ton of dry brushing to bring out all like every single strand of hair basically uh, is, is pulled out of that. So I do think she looks pretty good in general, but I do think she is not without her faults for sure. And again, most of that is just coming down to the shininess on the plastic. and this kind of the skin tone. The skin tone looks good, but I don't think it's doing it any favors, if that makes any sense. And then of course, here is our comparison because this is this is really what matters the most right now because look at this thing. It really is as close to this figure as you can get. It's very, very, very similar. I do think that uh, in general, all the weirdness of this figure is actually translated into the Super 7 figure, which is not an unknown thing for this line. They did it with Shredder for sure. Uh, so this is not a bad translation. I, I think that they're pretty faithful to the sculpt. And again, like I said, the original prototype looked nothing like this weird head sculpt we got because April's head is, is super wonky in the vintage line. I think they managed to make what is really weird looking here into something that's a lot better that just sort of has some, some details that are lost here and there. And then the jumpsuit looks really good. But of course, like I said, I do think that there are issues with the blue line because the blue line goes... Uh, doesn't go up as far as it did on the vintage figure, so that's kind of a that's kind of a difference there. And then uh, we do have one other April because we don't have a lot of Aprils that specifically fit this particular version. Uh, you know, there are other running changes and variants of April in the vintage line, but they are they are different instances of her. They're not this original one, you know, like the the prehistoric reporter or the ravishing reporter stuff like that. And then we've got our our NECA here, which is 
Obviously, its own thing. This is supposed to be the cartoon version, but they, they of course, draw inspiration from the same areas. I think at this point, I like the Super 7 better, and most of that is going to be down to sizing because this April is just way too short, and this April does seem to fit the bill a little bit better as far as being appropriately scaled to its own line. But at the end of the day, it's not worth comparing the two because they are so entirely different when it comes to articulation, aesthetics, overall design, and stuff like that. But there is a little cross-section of our various Aprils for this particular era. And then as far as size comparisons go, like I said, April does seem to scale a little bit better amongst her own line. So she is taller than the Turtles by half a head, maybe three quarters of a head or so, which I think is pretty good. Uh, she's not too tall, but she's not like a head shorter than the Turtles either. So that I can appreciate that. And then she does, of course, you know, come up a bit taller to larger figures like Bebop. Of course, he is on an entirely different scale when it comes to overall mass and, and size, really. Uh, as far as other lines, here she is with uh, Marvel Legends, so your your hood, your average Marvel Legends collector figure. And then we will do uh, the old standby figure arts, uh, Goku, Saiyan Raised on Earth. You can see she is a bit taller than him, which of course does work because of the fact that they are not within the same scale at all. And here she is with a, another 7-inch scale female. So here she is with the Masterverse Evil Lin, and you can see that they kind of stack up relatively well among each other. And then here she is with a Hasbro uh, Black Series figure. So she definitely doesn't scale among, you know, 112 kind of stuff, 6 inch scale figure. She's going to be a little bit bigger, but she is going to fit among other 7 inch style lines relatively well. And then as far as accessories goes, this is one of the areas where Super 7 went back to kind of beef this package up and give her not one, but two alt heads that frankly are closer to the uh, the vintage figure than what she comes on in the box. So since we're talking about accessories, we'll talk about these uh, more and more vintage heads. So you've got this one here, and here's our vintage figure for comparison again. You can see that it is it is quite a bit closer, especially when it comes to the hair. It's really the hair for me. And that one little swipe of hair that comes down on her forehead is very vintage inspired as well. Uh, so I do really like this one. There's a good chance that either this one or the other alt head will be my, my go-to head for uh, whatever permanent display I put her in because I, th I think this one fits a little bit better, especially when it comes to the hair. It's a little closer uh, sculpted to the head. It's not as... Uh, it's not as poofy as that default head. And then we get the other head, which is similar to this one, but with a different expression. So she's uh, she's smiling and or talking, depending on how you want to interpret this. But she's got the headset with the microphone on. So you can have her doing this, you know, like on-air reporting kind of thing to take it back to the 80s uh, in terms of her, her deco and display. And I do think that both of these head sculpts are a great addition to this figure. And I think they are, I think they are the better of the three uh, quite a bit, honestly. And then as far as everything else she comes with, she does come with a lot of vintage inspired accessories. Uh, we've got this here. We've got a tripod with the camcorder on it. This thing I, I kind of let down on, honestly, because it's it's too small. Uh, the legs, the legs aren't telescoping or anything. They don't come out. So it only comes up to, I mean, you can see it. It comes up to her hand, the bottom of her hand. It's way too small. I wish this was a more full size tripod because it would look a little bit better. You'll have to, you'll have to play with, you know, your, your field of vision here to make it work. And all of these legs come off. So they just pop, maybe not that one, but this one comes off and then the other one comes off and then they do sort of fold up like that just to be more compact. And the camcorder does peg in. It's not, you know, well, there goes a the leg. It's not all one piece. So the camcorder does come off and it can be held. Of course, there's no handle here. So how would you hold it? Well, it's the same thing that the vintage figure did. The gun that she comes with goes in the slot and then you've got your gun camcorder, which is the weirdest thing, but it's a very Turtles thing. So here's her gun. She's got this little pistol that she can hold on to, and she does come with trigger finger hands. We'll talk about those here in a second. So she does come with the gun. We also get her flashlight, which has a little bit of paint on the end. It's got the power button on, uh, and then you've got a microphone for her as well. A little silver paint on that. We've got two turtle comms for her. You've got a turtle comm uh, that is open where she's talking to Donnie. Fully painted in there, looks really good, happy with that. And then you've got a closed turtle com as well. We've got the uh, briefcase that she comes with. 
this thing is kind of interesting. It's 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 obviously one that you could uh, you could open, but it's not really meant to be open. It's uh, it's like because of this piece right here, how it's actually made to to be sort of. Uh, Functional is not really functional. The more you pull it, the more it's going to stress the plastic. And if you open it all the way, there's a good chance you're going to break it. Uh, so this thing, once you open it, it does this too. It doesn't exactly close anymore. It probably will eventually, but it, that's kind of wonky. I'm not, I'm not too jazzed about that. And then she comes with uh, her hands. So we've got a set of open palm hands. And when I say a set, I do mean she has two of each. And then you've got a set of gripping hands. She comes with fists on her in the box, of course. And then you've got your uh, trigger finger hand, and these are vertically hinged hands also, which is really nice. Everything else is a lateral hinge. And then, of course, in typical Playmates fashion, you do get the, uh, the sprue. So she's got the briefcase, the camcorder, the microphone, the flashlight. The legs for the tripod make up the frame. You've got ninja stars here as well and then you've got the uh the gun for her so she is she is pretty well stacked i think for the most part her accessories are really solid i do wish i do wish the tripod was bigger that's probably my one big gripe with these is that i wish the tripod was bigger but i do think the extra heads that she comes with really sweeten the deal and and kind of boost this figure up quite a bit they do still suffer from the shiny plastic situation but in some ways i don't think it's as big of a deal on these for some reason than that first head. So overall, there are a lot of things I like about this figure, but there's probably as many things that I, that I don't like about this figure. I definitely think this is the one uh, that people are going to have the most issues with, and most of it just comes down to, to Deco. I, however, I think she looks a lot better than we ever expected she was going to. I think there, in just some ways, she doesn't hit the mark on a few instances. I do think it really comes down to the plastic finish on this figure. I think that some of that, you know, likeness, if that's the right word, kind of gets lost in translation in some ways, but she is going to look pretty solid next to the turtle. She comes with a really solid array of accessories too, save for that tripod. I really wish it was a little bit more functional than it is, but I like the fact that it's included. And then of course, she is very, very vintage inspired. At the end of the day, they did manage to come through on a very vintage inspired figure in many respects, something that absolutely looks miles better than that prototype ever did. So uh, that's going to do it for this look at the Super 7 Ultimates April O'Neil. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share, and until next time.